the day of atonement, a day of affliction, a day of fasting. Did you know that there are seven annual holy days mentioned in the Bible? Greetings, I'm David Brett here with John Fisher bringing you Revealing the Truth. And we want to talk about these seven annual holy days, uh, one in particular, which is the fifth one in sequence, is called the Day of Atonement. It is a day of affliction. It is the fast. And there's some debates on whether affliction really means fasting, but they actually called this the fast in Acts 27 and verse 9, in which uh, it is referenced. And why would they reference it? Well, they referenced it because that was the norm. It was a lifestyle to be obedient to the Father. And those coming in, uh, though they were coming in through the Messiah, they were going and learning um, because Moses, the uh, teachings of Moses were taught, and it wasn't just they were Moses' teachings, they were Yahweh's teachings. But there is a little different uh, aspect in Messiah today in that the blood sacrifices, ritual purification rites, um, Levitical garments, stuff like that was, is not necessary for us today in Messiah. And we do have a high priest. He is in heaven and uh, he stands for his people. And just as Satan accuses us day and night, uh, the high priest is there for us. In Leviticus 23, in fact, uh, Leviticus 23 is where you find an outline of these uh, holy days, and not only the seven annual, but also the appointed time of Passover, which is not a holy day, but it is a, a memorial for us in Messiah, and so we, we honor that. But these uh, are perpetual statutes. They, they go on and on. In fact, we, we could look at future uh, references, even the Feast of tabernacles being kept in the kingdom, the coming kingdom. But we find the weekly Sabbath is there starting out, but Yahweh says, these are mine. So even though Moses described these to the people, they were written down. And they may have been written down, uh, condensed in this plat, uh, or in a, a, I guess we could say platform, uh, of Leviticus 23, uh, because everyone would have wanted to know, well, exactly when are these times? We want to make sure we keep them. Of course, they were a bit of a community back then, but we have communities being built up today, just as there were seven assemblies uh, in Revelation 2 and 3 mentioned. There are different assemblies today, and it, it wasn't just seven back at that time. There were, there were more. But we're in a different land now. We're, we're not necessarily going up to Jerusalem. In fact, there is no temple there at this point, though we are looking at a time in which that will be uh, restored. And uh, the, for the physical people going into the kingdom, they will be required, according to Ezekiel, uh, prophet Ezekiel, major prophet, uh, going into chapter 40 and on, we find even the Messiah is there, but the, the physical people are going to be doing things under the Levitical priesthood, it appears to be. Um, but we are under the Melchizedek order, so we no longer do physical sacrifices. We no longer do purification rites. There's one baptism, one immersion. Uh, Yahshua is our covering. Um, he uh, is the propitiation for sins. So the, the blood that was was shed is for us. So some would say, well, then we don't need to do any of these things. Well, it says they're perpetual statutes. They are forever. And we are learning, in a sense, uh, what to do uh, now and being in training for what's coming because Yahweh's people will be a kingdom of priests, the ones that are first fruits, uh, the saints, uh, they will be a kingdom of priests and working with Yahshua in the kingdom. Now, uh, evidently, King David will be there as well. Uh, other patriarchs like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, 
uh, Jacob na Jacob's name was actually changed to Israel. So you have him having 12 sons, and it's through the promise through Isaac in which they'll all be brought into the land. And they were brought into the land initially, but there's also going to be this future kingdom. And we find even with Ezekiel 38, I believe, or 37, 38, there is uh, even prophecy, I think, being fulfilled today with some, uh, of course, we see Judah more readily identifiable than the other tribes. Uh, they are in the, in the land today. So now we, we're in a place and time in which prophecy can be fulfilled. Uh, but the walls are up in Jerusalem and there's other things that are going to, those are going to have to come down. Other things will, will take place. But Leviticus 23, we find the fifth annual appointed time, Moedim, basically means an appointed time. It's a time for us to come before Yahweh and worship. And we do this in, in spirit. We do this according to his time, according to the command. But it, it is done with humble hearts and minds uh, before him, still doing what he wants, but doing it a little different under the Melchizedek order. Right. And the book of Leviticus is right in the center of the what's called the Torah, the five first mm -hmm. books of, of Moses. We, we find the Ten Commandments in the book of Exodus and the book of Deuteronomy. So you, you, said, you mentioned in the beginning uh, about how Yahshua, even though he is in, uh, the new order of Melchizedek, mm -hmm. that he sits in heaven. He's a mediator. He's an advocate for us. And we might ask, against what? <laughs> And, of course, it's against the, the accusations of Satan that we have sinned. Mm -hmm. So are, 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 the, <laughs> are the commandments still good then? Absolutely. Right. Right. That's Ab a good point. Absolutely. So, so we still must be obedient to the law of Yahweh. And, if we, and law is probably not the best word there. Uh, the word in Hebrew is Torah. So, so, and that just means teachings. Mm -hmm. um, and I might also mention that the first holy convocation, now there are seven annual holy convocations, but the first one mentioned is a weekly holy convocation. Mm -hmm. It's the Sabbath day, the seventh day, which, again, it's a perpetual um, commandment. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the pattern in Hebrew, of course, is cyclical. Uh, we are forgetful at times. In fact, uh, one of the tribes, um, their name meant uh, forgetful. In fact, I forget what tribe that was. That was, uh, uh, no, it was, it started with an M. <laughs> Help could me out be, here, John. Could be, a, could be Manasseh. <laughs> Manasseh, that's Manasseh. right, forgetful. Okay. <laughs> Let's go into Leviticus 23, verses 27 through 29. Also the tenth day of this seventh month shall be the day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation for you. You shall afflict your souls, your beings, and offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh, and you shall do no work on that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make atonement for you before Yahweh your Elohim. For any person who is not afflicted in soul on that same day shall be cut off from his people. This is pretty important. I mean, the Sabbath itself, the weekly Sabbath, was uh, said to be a sign between Yahweh and, and the people. And so as we do these things, we are identified with the creator of the universe. And, you know, in Acts 15, uh, it's brought up that, you know, well, the, the people uh, were told just to get rid of pagan worship and, and blood uh, sacrifices uh, uh, to these pagan idols and d d drinking of blood, that, that, that type of thing. Well, those were obvious. And even today, if someone has long hair, they're coming in or they're smoking, we're going to ask them to, you know, put those things away and come and learn. And that's exactly what uh, they were to do at that time as well, come and learn. And of course, they were learning uh, to be obedient to the Father, to learn how to live according to His way. And when you look throughout Scripture, you find His way is the way. And Messiah lived that way. And so we are to follow in his footsteps as he followed his father and didn't sin. So we're not to sin either. And if we go on sinning, well, then his sacrifice is not going to be applicable for us. And so we have to consider these things. 
And Leviticus 23 gives us real specific timing uh, in verses 30 through 32. It says, And any person who does any work on that same day, that person I will destroy from among his people. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. It shall be to you a Sabbath of solemn rest. And you shall afflict your souls on the ninth day of the month at evening. From evening to evening you shall observe your Sabbath. So it is from sunset to sunset. That is a bib biblical day. Now when you get into you know, honoring Yahweh and keeping his holy days, and again we're not talking about holidays in which man has taken days and adopted them from pagan worship. And we see this. And it's very provable. We have um, the untold story of Christmas. We have the counterfeit called Easter, th these booklets that are available. In fact, we have the booklet Biblical Holy Days, Yesterday, Today, and Forever. And uh, indeed, we find throughout Scripture that that is the case. Yahweh's appointed times, uh, a bookmark is available. It goes over these and the sim symbolism that we see. And there are layers of understanding. We have literal, we have figurative, we have allusions to things. And, you know, it talks about, John, the, the shadows. Uh, these are shadows of things to come. Well, Yahshua is already in heaven, in, you know, in the reality of, of what we want to be, uh, in, in that reality of uh, the heavenly realm. And, and what is he doing? He is a high priest. And so as we come into the kingdom and are changed into spirit beings, we will be working with him. Now he's a high priest, that means uh, there's going to be another, you know, other priest. And it's said that we will be a kingdom of priests. So we have to consider this and we have to consider the times in which uh, blood sacrifices were given, uh, these type of things. We, we understand that that was under the Levitical priesthood, which was established under the first covenant, essentially. Now, it doesn't mean that it wasn't from the beginning. I mean, it was once Adam and Eve sinned. Animals had to die. They were covered with those uh, skins. Well, we're covered with Messiah today, and his blood cleanses us from previous sins. And we have him as a mediator today to go through uh, for when we make mistakes. And we're not perfect yet. We are striving for that perfection, though. And in Second Peter, Peter even says, you know, upon your faith, build upon that and continue. And so we're continuing to learn. We're continuing to grow in Messiah. And we understand that the Messiah didn't sin. So we're not to sin either. And if we are to uh, not sin, then we won't be breaking the Sabbath or Sabbaths, plural, in reference to the seven annual Sabbaths. This fifth appointed time, the Day of Atonement, is important. It is a very special time in which we come before Yahweh. And you are invited as well to come before him and worship properly in honoring him. Did you know that the Heavenly Father's name has been purposely covered up in the Bible almost 7,000 times? It was done in an effort to protect people from blaspheming the sacred name. But because of this doctrine, people have broken the third commandment. It's time to come out of man-made errors and into the true worship of Yahweh, our Heavenly Father. To learn more, request your free in-depth study entitled The Mistaken J. Write to YAIY 2963 County Road 233 Kingdom City, Missouri 65262 or visit us online at YAIY.org. You may also call toll free 
1877 642 4101. The Day of Atonement, a Day of Affliction, the Fast. It's something that is important for us to know about. It is something important for us to do in the Melchizedek order to honor Yahweh, the Father. And Yahshua himself said, look, there's no one good but the Father. So he himself submitted to him. We ourselves are to submit also to the Father. But we have to understand we don't do all the things that uh, were done. And this is a, a problem for, I think, Christianity in general. Uh, because they see aspects of like book of Hebrews, Galatians talks about the law, but the law that's really being referred to is sacrificial laws, the Levitical priesthood, the, the uh, ritual washings, these type of things. That certainly, and it's not really done away with, it's just in abeyance. It, it's not for us to do those things necessarily, but it, it would be for the physical people once a temple is established if they're not going to be uh, accepting of Messiah, these things are applicable. And there are evidently those going to be brought into the kingdom who are going to have to learn of Yahweh's ways. And I think eventually they will be able to accept the Messiah because he died for all, uh, all that will accept him. But there are those that are not accepting him and they are doing uh, what they feel is correct under the Levitical priesthood even at this time. And there are those that, uh, you know, will be brought in doing these things. In Leviticus 16, we find um, the high priest uh, at that time under the Levitical priesthood. In verse 3 and, and verse 4, it says, Aaron shall enter the holy place with this, with a bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. And he shall put on the holy linen tunic and the linen undergarments shall be next to his body and he shall be girded with a linen sash and attired with a linen turban. These are holy garments. And then he shall bathe his body in water and put them on. Now, <laughs> it's interesting. When you, when you search the internet today, maybe you're searching videos, for example, and you search Yahweh's name. And you'll get a lot of videos that have individuals with almost like a high priestly garments. They have the, the mitre with Yahweh's name in Paleo Hebrew, and, and then they have the, the different garments on them. And it almost looks, and now here's the thing, they, they accept the Messiah. They, they are acknowledging the Messiah, but they have all this, these garments on. They look like Levitical priests. And it may be that they're thinking, well, we're a priestly nation under Messiah, so we're going to be wearing priestly garments. Well, we're not priests yet in the sense that we'll be serving as a kingdom of priests. We are saints, referred to as saints, uh, but we're not first fruits. I mean, that, that comes when Yahshua returns. So um, seeing these people, it, 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 it's kind of confusing for people that are learning more about what the Bible actually says, but then to see these, uh, these acts going on, and it, you know, we teach by our actions, but these actions of putting, you know, even the head covering, that, that was for the Levit Levitical priests only. Um, it, and Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11, if a man has his head covered, uh, you know, it's a, it's a shameful thing. It's, it's not to be done. Um, so we have to consider these things. But in uh, verses 5 through 6 of Leviticus 16, it says, He shall take from the congregation of the sons of Israel two male goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. Then Aaron shall offer the bull for the sin offering, which is for himself, which he may make atonement for himself and for his household. Now there are, there are things going on in heaven that we don't fully uh, see at this time. When we're changed, we'll see these things going on. Um, and it's not necessarily the, the high priest at this time in Messiah, or the Messiah himself being the high priest, that he's offering things for himself to purify himself. No, it, it's not necessarily that. But we do see that there's sacrifices being made on our behalf in the sense of um, when we go back to the Levitical priesthood, that 
Now, Yahshua is a perfect sacrifice, so he, he just says, look, this is their situation. It's almost like he's talking to the Father. This is their situation, and uh, I've been there, and I know what they're going through. Um, and, you know, let's, let's give them covering at this time. And, and that's mercy. I mean, we receive grace, and that's a free gift. We also receive uh, justification in Messiah. That's also free. But it's a continuing process as we grow in grace and knowledge of, of the Messiah and what these things that are going on. Now, we actually see a couple goats at this time in Leviticus 16. And one could be representative of Messiah. I mean, as you go through these, it says in verse 7 through 8, He shall take the two goats and present them before Yahweh at the doorway of the tent of meeting. Aaron shall cast lots for the two goats, one lot for Yahweh and the other for the scapegoat. Basically, one is for um, to, to place the sins and, and to cast away. And some, that goat is actually called a zezel. And some look at that as being representative of Satan. And there's, there's reason uh, to believe that that's the case. Even when you go to Revelation, you see um, an angel coming down with chains and binding Satan, taking him away. And so there's a, there's a parallel there, I think we see in that. But in verses uh, 15 through 16 of Leviticus 16, it says that he shall slaughter the goat of the sin offering, which is for the people. This is the other goat. And it shall bring, it shall bring his blood inside the veil and do with its blood as he did for the blood of the bull, the sprinkling of the mercy seat in front of the mercy seat. He shall make atonement for the holy place because of the impurities of the sons of Israel because of their transgressions in regard to all their sins. We see a number of things that the Messiah actually represents. Even the red heifer in which was a burnt offering and the ashes of that taken and mixed with water and then there's sprinkling upon the people uh, for their transgressions. We see Messiah even in that. We see Messiah throughout the tabernacle, throughout these things. And so a lot of people will say, well, then we don't have to do any of these things. Well, in a sense, there's a number of things that we don't have to do. We don't have to offer up the physical sacrifices, and yet we still bring an offering of ourselves, of an offering of our increase to Yahweh, um, and we do certain things today that are applicable in Messiah, in the Spirit, under the Melchizedek order. And, you know, we've been going over this uh, uh, for some time now, but we, we feel a need to because there are those that are, are dressing up like Levitical priests that I don't think they fully understand what they should be doing. They're calling upon Yahweh's name. They're, they're acknowledging the correct name of Yahshua, which means Yahweh's salvation. These names are transliterated into our language today. It's not that we're trying to be Hebrew uh, linguists or anything. It's just the way it is. Uh, you know, if you take Obama... Obama's name and you, you take it across seas, they're still going to call him Obama. They're not going to try to trans, translate that name mm -hmm. into something, but they're going to actually call upon his name and, and give honor to him. So we're doing the same thing. So we're, we're sacrificing, instead of animals, we're sacrificing the, the, the calves of our lips. Well, that's what Hosea refers to, yeah. And, and so we are doing spiritual sacrifices in a sense. I mean, when we come before Yahweh at his appointed time, singing forth praise, uh, looking into his word, we're positive that this is pleasing to him. Uh, what's not pleasing to him is to come up with our own days, uh, especially when we take them from pagan worship and try to worship him. He forbids that. And so to do that and to say, well, that's pleasing to him, uh, that's... Uh, that's a fantasy, really. So we, we need to be sure that we're doing what we need to be doing the best that we can. And, and we're not saying that we're doing everything perfectly, but we are sharing what we've come to understand. And we want to allow people to hear the message of the Messiah, 
of the coming kingdom. We want to share the, the message of repentance, which is you know, turning back to Yahweh, acknowledging his ways over our own ways. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it says don't be wise in your own sight. Uh, don't rely on your own understanding. And so how do we find out what Yahweh wants? Well, we study the word. It's a path uh, for us, and it's a path that leads into eternal life. You know, Yahshua was talking to the rich man, and the rich man was saying, well, what do I need to do to enter in, into eternal life? Well, Yahshua said, keep the commandments. Now, it's true that, uh, you know, there are ten that are emphasized. Uh, of those is the Sabbath, uh, weekly Sabbath, but we find the seven annual Sabbaths are applicable for us today. And so, um, you know, the, the rich man said, well, yeah, I've done all these from my youth. Very good. Now, uh, give, give what you have away, because evidently he was coveting uh, one of the commandments that uh, we're, we're to be obedient to. And he said, come follow me. So we're doing the same thing in the sense that anything that we have in error, we, when, it, when it comes to mind, we need to put that away and follow the Messiah. Not neglecting the commandments of Yahweh, that would be foolishness because the judge uh, sets the law. And if we break the law, then we are, you know, <laughs> we'll be, we'll be uh, condemned. condemned, essentially. <laughs> And that's not a, 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 you know, a happy message for people. What? Condemn. In fact, we don't hear a lot of hellfire messages anymore. <laughs> and hellfire, uh, hell, we have a booklet on that as well uh, called Hellfire, Destiny of the Unsaved. But essentially, hell, we understand, is just a grave. Uh, now, there is lemne to paros in the Greek, which refers to lake of fire. That is a, a place of destruction. Mm -hmm. And that is a place we do not want to go. We want to honor Yahweh, and we do understand that we're under a Melchizedek order now, not under the Levitical priesthood, but we still come before Yahweh with the calves of our lips. We understand that the perpetual statutes are just that. They are going on, and they, they've never ended. And no place do we find that we are not to keep his days that he sets apart and says are holy, which is essentially what holy means. It means set apart. And, you know, when he, when he does that, we need to pay attention because he's made it holy. We can't make it unholy, and we can't choose days and make them holy. It, it's what Yah Yahweh says. It's an abomination to do such things. So we need to be aware of what he wants. And he says, keep the Day of Atonement.